Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. It's TPM5 here, back again with another NBA video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a preview of the Eastern Conference semifinals between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Brooklyn Nets. Let's get into it. The Bucks entered this postseason with a daunting rematch of the Miami Heat, a team they lost to in five games last year. But nevertheless, they convincingly beat the Miami Heat. Mike Budenholzer, the Bucks coach, showed a large ability to change his schemes and adapt to what the Miami Heat would do, and in the end he found the right uh, balance between playing on the inside and then also, you know, the perimeter game, and also limited the Miami Heat's ability to put up the quote-unquote wall for Giannis. Another key factor for in that series was the upgrade from Eric Bledsoe up to Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday is a great two-way point guard who possesses the ability to defend at an elite level on the perimeter and in the end he helped the Bucks and also Jimmy Butler also, you know, had a very um, poor series as well as he simply didn't crack 20 points per game and he was shooting terribly from the field. This segues into the Milwaukee Bucks' defensive prowess. They kept the Miami Heat to a 95.4 offensive rating, which was the lowest out of any team during the postseason in six seasons. And the Bucks won that series on an average of 20.5 points per game, so they had a point differential of 20.5, a truly dominant showing from them. In the first round, Giannis averaged 24 points, 15 rebounds, and 8 assists per game. He did obviously have a slight dip in points per game, but he was able to find the open man, evident in the assist numbers. Uh, Chris Middleton averaged 22 points, 7 rebounds and 4 assists. Obviously the second option on this team and another good um, set of games for him. Brook Lopez stepped up averaging 16 points and 7 rebounds in less than 30 minutes per game. And then Drew Holiday, the defensive specialist, averaged 15 points and 10 assists per game, truly showing that he can be an impact on the offensive side of the floor. It's also worth noting that Bobby Portis and um, Bryn Forbes stepped up off the bench, both averaging points in double digits, however they both played less than 20 minutes per game, so they'll be key off the bench against the Nets. Now as you guys know, the Brooklyn Nets are one of, if not probably, the best offensive team in the NBA's history, going off of their offensive rating for this season. And the Bucks are well equipped to defend them as they, so far this playoffs, have a 95.4 defensive rating. And during the regular season, they managed to have a defensive rating of 110.7, which was good enough to be in the top 10 of the NBA. The Bucks will need to be really good on the defensive side of the floor to stop a team that has an offensive rating of 128 in the first round and had an offensive rating of 117 during the regular season. If we're being honest with ourselves, the Brooklyn Nets do not have an option to stop Giannis. Sure, Kevin Durant could do a good job on him, but you know, there's a few ifs and buts there. On the other hand, the Brooklyn Nets have the three-headed monster that is Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden. And sure, Drew Holiday can do a good job on one, on one of the Brooklyn Nets' um, superstar guards. However, you know, it's going to take a fair effort from the Bucks defensively to stop them. And I think that you know they can put a few defensive efforts in, but in the end, you know, you have to outscore the Brooklyn Nets to beat them this season. And yeah, just quickly, obviously, you know, you have to outscore to win. That's the nature of any sport. But you know, it's just the sheer offensive power that the Nets hold. Anyways, let's get on to the Brooklyn Nets side of the matchup. The Nets managed to beat a heavily injured Boston in five games, rather convincingly as well, setting almost all kinds of playoff franchise records between James Harden, Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. So Kevin Durant became the first player in Brooklyn Nets franchise history to score 35 plus points in back-to-back postseason games as he had 42 in game 4 and obviously 35 plus in game 3. And Kyrie also had 39 points in game 4 meaning that the Brooklyn Nets became the second team in NBA history to have multiple 35-point scorers in consecutive games, with the last team to be able to do that was the 1962 um, Lakers, when Elgin Baylor and Jerry West achieved this uh, feat. The reason I bring this up is that the Brooklyn Nets have an offensive rating of just under 128, which is better than, by four rating points than any other team, with the second team being the Utah Jazz. They also had a league-high uh, offensive rating of 117.3 during the regular season, and that figure could be considered as low because they were missing their big three playing together for the majority of the year. 
during their first round series. Kevin Durant averaged 35 points, 8 rebounds and 3 assists. James Harden averaged 26 points and 11 uh, assists as well. And then Kyrie Irving taking on the more of a shooting guard role. Uh, averaged 25 points, 7 rebounds and 3 assists as well. And then Joe Harris averaged 14 points shooting over 50% from three as he's been given open looks by the um, defense as they focus on the big three. And in that all too common now game four win that I've referenced a lot in this video, the Brooklyn Nets got 104 points from their big three. And that's not even taking into account the assists that James Harden would have provided to other players outside of the big three. However, the team that had a 48 and 24 record in the regular season has had some struggles on the defensive side of the floor. Obviously, the Nets can simply outscore their opponents, but as the playoffs come and the possessions slow down, it is worth noting that they had 113 uh, defensive rating during the regular season, which is the 22nd best in the league. However, against the depleted Boston team, they um, were ranked 8th in the league in defensive rating, and they held uh, Evan Fournier 5 from 15 in game 4 and also kept Marcus Smart 2 for 9 from 3. The Brooklyn Nets may just be playing a battered Boston team, however they jumped into the top 50% of the teams left playing in the NBA as it is playoffs time and they are ranked 8th with a defensive rating of 117. So those are all the stats for the video, so let's get into my prediction and what I think will happen in this um, semi-conference finals matchup. So the Brooklyn Nets obviously on the offensive end are a very talented team and the Milwaukee Bucks have showed that they can defend, however I believe that the Brooklyn Nets simply have too much uh, star power for the Bucks to compete with and it will probably be an honourable loss. I'd say a six game series with um, Kevin Durant being the highest scorer and Giannis you know, putting up you know, the stats he's been putting up, I think he'll average at least seven assists but yeah. Now that's the end of the video guys, don't forget to like, share and most importantly subscribe. Also comment with your predictions for the series and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.